Good morning, good day to all, and welcome once more to episode number 15 of IK TV's uh, One Foundation, on which we discuss uh, quite a number of issues of relevance from a religious perspective primarily. But the issues that we do discuss touch all spheres of life. Would you believe that, gentlemen, panelists, would you believe that this is episode number 15 already? Seems like we just got started um, just a while ago. And uh, here we are already 15 episodes in. Today's episode is a rather interesting one, has to do with the reality of suffering in this world. We are going to unpack that in just a little bit. We have with us two of our regular three panelists and so i'll ask them to both introduce themselves and then i will give in fact i tell you what i will do a word of prayer short word of prayer then i'll have you gentlemen introduce yourself and so heavenly father we thank you for the privilege that is ours and the opportunity that is ours uh, to be able to share god we pray that you will enlighten our thoughts fathers we represent you to the world god that we may do the right job of representation god we pray also for those that will view watch this program god and father that you would be with each and every listener so that which should be perceived and received that which is good and wholesome and right for edification oh god they will receive it we pray your blessings to christ our lord amen gentlemen go ahead and introduce yourself Amen, amen. Well, Dr. Richards, Bishop Olivier, I am I'm happy to be back. I've been away for some time. I've missed the past few episodes, but this is a correct episode number 15. Uh, it's quite some time. And it seems as if we just started yesterday. The magnitude of the topics that we have discussed, that we have um, deliberated over in this room, it's really, it's really amazing and really very critical in the times that we live and with all that's happening. In fact, let me just say while I introduce myself, Bishop Wendell Davis, uh, New Testament Church of God, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia. I, I felt kind of bad to have been away last week in those that, that um, dramatic, tragic, heart-wrenching situation that happened that just is a really escalation of what has been building up and continue to build up in our country, in our nation. Um, those, those murders and those killings, I felt bad to be away in the midst of all that. Um, but I'm happy to be back and to see what we can do as we discuss today's topic. So look forward for the discussion. Look forward for your leadership here, Dr. Richards, and the, our involvement, Bishop Olivier. Blessings. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Wendell Davis. All right. Our I'm other Stephen panelists. Olivier. Yes, I'm Stephen Olivier from the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, Seven Seven District. And once again, I count it a privilege to be here and to be sharing with others. You know, gentlemen, it's just amazing that, you know, we look for opportunities to share the gospel and thank God for this avenue that is available to us. And so really want God to use us to minister to the hearts and lives of people. And one of the things we, you know, one of the things I'm praying for, gentlemen, is that when people you know, especially those who are, who are backsliders, those who don't know Jesus Christ, as we share, they will be challenged to turn to Jesus Christ and call him Lord and Master of their lives. Excellent. Thank you, Bishop Oliver. I am Cecil Richards, um, pastor of the Kingston Baptist Church and also president of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Convention of Baptist uh, Churches. Um, also missing today is uh, one of our staples on this program, Bishop Conrad, but, and he calls in out of Chicago. So he offers a perspective that is beyond our um, Caribbean parameters. Very, very useful contribution every time. So we are missing Bishop Conrad today. Our topic is one that either has touched or continues to touch um, many of you that are in the listening audience our topic gentlemen our topic um, listeners is this finding 
God's purpose in pain. Um, and and, and the, the basic parameters that we are going to walk through, life is often marked by brokenness. Remember that word, brokenness and um, suffering, leaving us questioning the purpose behind our pain. In this episode, we will explore how God can bring redemption and meaning to our most difficult experiences, offering hope and healing amidst broken brokenness before we begin to um unpack and, and break down unravel this topic gentlemen i'm um, one of you your notification on your computer or if you're using your phone your notification on your device is still turned on so every notification that comes on i'm hearing i'm hearing the, the bell for that so please if you go ahead and check for notifications and be sure that your notification is uh muted gentlemen um, this is a rather troubling and um, topic and uh, why is it why do you think it is so troublesome for people to deal with um, th these two that seem so irreconcilable purpose and pain how can there be purpose all right how can there be purpose in pain how can there be a God who has power power to be God at the same time that there is pain in people's lives. Whether the pain comes from your loved one being gunned down, that's, that's pain. Whether the pain comes from a broken relationship, whether the pain comes from an abusive situation, whether, whether the pain comes from your economic uh, destitute, you destitute economically, so many different sources of pain in the real lives of people people who are praying mind you people who are believing god mind you people who acknowledge and ascribe to god the power gentlemen the power to alleviate all kindness of this they say he's a god who heals diseases he's a god who can calm the storm he's a god, a god who can raise the dead and how come if he can do all of this he cannot hear my prayer and he cannot deal with my pain. What say you, gentlemen? Okay, I thought um, Bishop Davis, you were going to come in there, but um, you know, it's it's something else. And I've I've read several books written uh, with regards to pain, especially that emotional pain, and. Um, you know, oftentimes people reflect on it from the, 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 the standpoint that, you know, um, as you rightly said, I'm serving God over these years. I love one, somebody that is very close and dear to, um, to you has passed on. Why, you know, um, somebody has cancer, why? And they love God, they serve in God. And so the end result of it is that people have a tendency to blame God for what is happening. And I think, you know, not think, but it is truly unfair to do so because, you know, one has to go back to the Genesis account when man sinned against God. That sin affected this world. It affected us. You know, I, I reflect on the uh, the scripture verses there, Genesis chapter 3, and from verse 17, this is the new King James Version. Then, then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat of the herb of the field you shall sweat um of the sweat on your face you shall eat bread till till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for thus you are and thus you shall return and when we think of it and you go back to the the uh, genesis account you realize because man sinned against god that sin affected the world. It affected um, everything around us. I want to believe before we could have probably played with a lion, 
um, had a snake as a pet and that sort of thing. Now you can't do that. Sin affected everything basically. It affected us. You know, it, it gives us now a time frame in that sense where we live on this earth. So man, what man did there in the Garden of Eden really, really brought a curse upon mankind. Before I yes. go to Bishop, before I go to Bishop Davis there, what you just saying and um, and you putting it out there for the audience to accept is that uh, we had this coming. Because, yeah. well, okay, is that, are you, you going to stand by that? Because um, man was disobedient to begin with that um this is not on god this is on man we had this coming and therefore what you just um posited to a wide listening audience some are christians some of other faiths some of a multiplicity of worldviews and backgrounds some are agnostics and some are even atheists and you just put it out there for everyone that the explanation for the presence of suffering in this world is that man has been disobedient to God and therefore man has this coming. Bishop Davis, I don't know if you want to comment on that or you have your own introductory remarks, but this well, is your dream for introductory well, remarks. Well, I, I like I like to comment on that. You know, you say it. I'm certain the Bishop Bishop Olivier will, you know, will want to give more clarity to what he exactly. just said. Yeah. Um, although I'm not sure that so much clarity is needed, um, because I I want to start this discussion first of all. I mean, the introduction to this to this episode is so resounding that I, I want to take the liberty, Doctor Richards, of mention it again, where it says. What we are saying and we are told and we understand that life is often marked by brokenness and suffering. That life is often marked by brokenness and suffering. And when the brokenness and the sufferings occur, it leaves us to question the purpose behind our pain. Okay. And as I read that and I deliberated on that last evening, I, I remember that that um, Peter said, First Peter chapter three verse was fifteen or thereabouts. We must sanctify the Lord in our hearts, and we must be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason for the hope. And I'm saying this here because the reason: how can we hope in this God, and how can we trust in this God, who quote unquote, and I'm saying it generally speaking, quote unquote, Bishop Richards would sit on his throne and allow all these um, painful experiences to come our way um those killings um and all the difficulties that we face in this world today because these are the questions um dr richard that we are hearing or the comments we are hearing people making how can we say that god is a god of love and yet he allows all these difficulties all these painful things to happen and so we we're saying that we want to explore how god can bring redemption and I think that's that's a part that we must not overlook. How yeah, but don't, don't don't go to the redemption yet. All right? Because yeah, what I'm saying it to I'm, I'm saying it to answer the question and answer okay, the question okay. and right. and right. commenting right. on what um, um Bishop Olivier said, um because you see behind it all. Okay, let me not go to the redemption just yet. James tells us in James chapter one verse thirteen to fifteen that let no man say when he's tempted that I'm tempted of God, because God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man. So I'm, I'm putting it out here, that, um, and I like the way you put it uh, in summarizing what Bishop Olivier said. We had this coming. It seemed as if that the secular uh, listener out there would say that we are saying we had this coming. But we are not really saying so much that we had this coming. What we are saying is that what has, has been coming our way, what we are experiencing, is really as a result of our action and how we have been living our lives and the things that we have been doing, understanding that God has given us um, the responsibility and the right to choose and to make our own decisions as we go through life even though he advises us over and over in, the, in his word that which path we must choose but we have and we are talking about AI early on that man has gotten to the place where man thinks that he's master of his own destiny so he can chart, chart his own course and he, he, he can develop these devices that will guide and whatever else totally ignoring God, pushing God out of the out of the picture as to how we live our lives. And so when we make certain choices in our lives and, the, and we are suffering the consequences 
of our choices today, then the natural thing that we do, we go back and we blame God and we say, well, how can, how can God allow these things? Some blame happen? God. Some blame God. Well, yeah. Yeah. well, well I'm just, yeah. maybe I'm generalizing no too much. Well, maybe I'm generalizing too much. But yeah. how, can, how can how can God allow these things? But we're the ones. And so maybe to say bluntly that we had this coming, maybe it's kind of cruel, it's kind of difficult. But the reality of it is that we are responsible for what has been happening because we have allowed certain things to happen and, and go on certain ways. And until we come to the place where we understand that we cannot live our lives the way we are living them, minus God, or allowing God to be the leader and the guidance in our lives, that we are going to continue to have these escalating cases because man is going to go forward and further from God. I'll pause here for now. Yeah, thank you, listeners, for staying with us. We have just begun to dig at the very surface of this thing. We haven't even gone deep yet. We are still trying to unpack the, the cause of suffering. Uh, and, and then to two realities. Number one, first reality. Gentlemen, first reality, suffering. All right? I mean, there's no way you can get around it, okay? That's, that's an accepted reality. Whether you are a believer in God, you're an agnostic, you don't believe in God, you're an atheist, or you're a different religion, whatsoever. Suffering is an undeniable reality. Let's move to the other spectrum, cause. Uh, from what I'm hearing so far as we try to unravel this, um, we, we, we are at sea. We are not yet um, that concise in our understanding of the cause of suffering. On one end, if you are a believer in God, in the sovereignty of God, the presence of God, if you acknowledge that, you are willing to say that God is allowing consequences to play out as a result of the uh, disobedience of man. On the other hand, if you are not a, a Christian, or if you are not a believer in God, if you're not an atheist, you are saying that uh, the suffering that are happening here are simply consequent on the actions of man and has nothing to do with the permissive will of God uh, at all at all. Gentlemen, what say you to that? Well, I, I thought you were going to expand um, whether support what Bishop Davis was saying, because the point about it is that sin brought consequences with it. Um, there is no getting away from that. Um, maybe the the word of the um, the choice of words, but the point is, the day that man took up that fruit and he ate of it, it affected everything. It affected him. It affected all of us. As a matter of fact, you saw the first murder. Um, that took place with Cain and Abel and all that happened after man sinned against God and so we can say what we want we can make a case well the Bible talks about um, you know you have the you have the occurrence there with Paul when Paul said look um, he had that thorn in the flesh and he asked God to move it and God said no, it's not going to be, it's a time for you to be dependent on me. And you have cases where people went through, um, godly people went through experiences. And it was a case where God, you know, he was carrying them through these experiences to teach them certain things, right? But, you know, undeniably, when we think about it, the day that man ate of that fruit, it affected this world it affected everyone as a matter of fact um i've heard people made the case already for death they they um where they talked about look at the body the body has a way of replenishing itself you know and uh, those who are not saved they have advanced the discussion that they, they don't understand why man why he dies because of you know what happens to the body but we know that the bible said as part of the curse from the dust you came and it's dust you're going to return so i think if we're going to have any argument based on where pain and suffering and these things we first have to look at the genesis account what exactly happened there when man sinned against god so by and large gentlemen um and i'm in a position today my listeners i want you to understand that i'm trying to 
moderate and, and, and guide the course of this discussion. Um, so I'm limiting my own interjections. But by and large, from what I have listened to, and I'm not sure if the audience would agree with me, but from what I am uh, have listened to, the cause of pain and suffering in this world is God. I'm not sorry, is not God, is man. The pain, the cause of pain and suffering in this world is man. It is simply man's sin, but it's the original sin of current um, uh, sins, uh, callous behavior. It is all well, man. Yeah. God is man. not an. Uh, wait, 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 wait. God is not. No, listen to my terms. Listen to my terms. God is not an active agent in any of the suffering encountered by man. God was the God over storms. God is the God who is God over plate tectonics and plate movements and and the, and the winds and how. Uh, when 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 um. Our own Caribbean um, I, brothers and sisters, when they are devastated and left without a house, a shelter over their head, and, and the ravages that they go through, Grenada sometimes will experience that. That this God, who is the God of the wind, he is not an active agent in that. When Haiti, my brothers and sisters in Haiti, when we saw the ravages after their multiple earthquakes there, and um, just the pain suffering we saw that in turkey recently too god who is god over the geological structures and laws he is not the active agent in that when when there are storms and there are other other things uh, that happen in nature that cause untold suffering god is not an active agent in these is he wow you laid it out. You laid it out, Doctor Richards. You really are laid it out there. I'm, I'm laying it out. I'm laying it out because I am. I'm from there. I remember I said um, we have a wide audience, and these are some of the questions that the people in the audience. Have. No, it's they good. Have, it's, uh, and it's some good of them ask also. these questions, and they're like, "I don't know if I can believe in a God like that." So we have to clarify these things because Absolutely. these are the present suffering our sufferings are not only people killing people and our suffering are not only tabanka if you guys know what tabanka is uh, our no, suffering... no, no, tell me <laughs> <laughs> relationship is <issue. laughs> our suffering is not only poverty our suffering uh basically the things that happen in our environment and the, and the the, the rising um our temperatures and all that comes with the storms and all of these uh, these are some of the current things that we go through and we have to give answer cogent and rightful answer to people who have questions because they want to know where is god when haiti is being devastated is and, and then they give you two options my brother when um my brother uh david bishop david they give you two options either one god is active agent and god is sending this as some kind of punishment for some evil and food and this and that god is the one who is standing um, or god has the power he is not the active agent but he fully well knows it is happening and he does nothing to either stop it or to alleviate it which uh, of those two choices you're going to pick up bishop davis I, I'm, I'm interested in hearing yeah yeah I, i'm interested in picking up i mean whichever one or all of them but i'm, I'm i meant it i meant it rightly uh, just putting the light side of thing that you really laying it out in a good way because as you rightly said these are the questions that these are the comments that these are the issues that people are dealing with and we're talking not in our respective churches and even within our respective churches there are people with different different opinion we are speaking to the to a wider audience of people of all type and who will have different questions and comments and those things so i think it is it is necessary for us to really lay it out here put it bluntly and so that people can understand and help them to understand maybe what we believe is right or at the, at the least give them the opinion to say uh, to, to, to go in whichever direction they think is is necessary but at the same time to lightly i want to say i am happy that i'm not the one sitting in your seat today 
uh, because it's the very thing that I struggled with, trying to moderate and maybe not being allowed to 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 put my own two cents worth in. So um, <laughs> you did a wonderful job, so. But I mean, a few things we need to we need to remember and need to keep at the forefront, um, Bishop Olivier, of people's mind and thinking. One is that God is a God of love. And, and we have to ensure and try to help people to understand that. And um, though it's difficult to grasp sometimes, though it's difficult to bring into reality or into the reality of people's situation sometimes, the fact of the matter is that God is a God of love. And, but continuing on that, he gives choices. God gives us choices. It's our responsibility to choose the way we want to live our lives. And with choices come consequences. Okay, so when we make certain choices, then naturally there are consequences that are about to bear upon us. And we cannot um, deny that. We cannot get away from that. One, God is a God of love. And he's a God of love, so he gave us, allow us to make choices. In the Garden of Eve, Eden, God could have made man in the Garden of Eden. And I know maybe your audience might say, we're yeah, always okay. going back to that. Yeah. But that's so the Genesis. There. Yeah, hold on. I, I deliberately, what choice did the person who suffered and whose body is totally ravaged and eaten away by cancer. Well, I'm getting to that, you know. What I'm getting choice to that. did they make? What choice did they make to suffer those consequences? I, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that, um, Dr. Richards. I'm getting to that our audience. I'm getting to that, Bishop Olivier. Because you see, unfortunately, the choices that I make would have consequences on my children. So the choices we make, they are not just the, the, the result of our choices. We are not the only ones who benefit from them or suffer from them. The choices that the environmentalists make or those who don't believe in certain things in science and cutting down the trees and all those things, the choices they make in cutting down the trees have effect, whether we believe it or not, on his own uh, and, 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 and all those places. And future generations to come, they did not make the choices. They were not the ones. But because of the, of the choice that we make, it's going to have effect on them. And so it's not necessarily the choice that the person is bearing the consequence. Maybe the person who gets shot by the gun and I don't know why, in whichever place, maybe they were not the exact ones who should have. But maybe we, we, the way we say sometimes is that they find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the wrong, right time. So that, and that's the, that's something that we seem not to understand that we have a responsibility to protect the, the, the place that we live in, the environment that we live in for future generations, as long as they, those would be. If we make the wrong choices now, they are going to suffer from, from the choices that we make, although they were not the ones who made these choices. If we fail to instill the right attitude and the right you know, belief in our children, their children and children's children will suffer from the, from the choices that we made way okay. in advance of time. So what you were just saying there um, counters the first point that choices have consequences. Well, not really fully counters it, but um, I think it was being positive that we suffer as a result, uh, consequent upon choices we we made. But what you just explained there is that uh, uh, suffering and perhaps even a lot of this suffering does not have to do with choices you made and therefore you experiencing it not as a consequence of something you did wrong. It falls upon you and that's where people scream unfair. Why doesn't God, I mean, I don't mind, why, why doesn't God stop me? Why doesn't but God stop yeah, this kind see, of pain? There are women in relationships, Rev, mm -hmm. Bishop, uh, you guys are counselors, you know this, their lives are destroyed. They, and they are good wives, wonderful wives. They're doing everything right by the book. Yeah. And some guys in their life, oh, they're going out and playing the entire field. Each, they're doing right. He's having the fun. They're having the pain. And they're like, where is God? And because I am doing it. It's not a, uh, am I being punished? Somebody out there say, Pastor, you're preaching. Am I being punished? Am I being punished for my God? I am the one yeah. going, doing good. What, what's, what's, you see what my... is the purpose of pain? That's what we're trying to get at, man. Right. And I, I get you. But what I'm saying we we can dance around it as much as we can but we have to unpack genesis in order for us to come to today we have to unpack what happened from genesis leading up to today we cannot leave genesis alone because the, the fact about the matter is 
when man sinned against God, it affected man. Mm -hmm. the, the storms, the hurricanes, all these things, the sicknesses we experience today, it affected man when man sinned against God. Because when you think of it and you look at the Genesis account, if man did not sin against God, we would not have had this problem. So that That's disobedience, true. that disobedience there caused a lot of the things we're experiencing today um, to happen uh, to happen on mankind. The so Bible I, said I, it's I, the um, paraphrasing that the the um, the earth cried out it long for the time when everything will change. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at it. Yes, as I said before, there are situations where God has allowed certain things to happen to people with a purpose, you know, with a purpose. And so we think of um, the children of Israel, they sinned against God and God had to deal with them. We understand that. As I mentioned before, Paul was one who cried out. He had, he had a thorn in his flesh and he cried out, God, remove this. And God said, no, there is purpose, the purpose? to What's that pain for him to remain, for him to remain humble. What's the purpose of this 13 year old girl who was brutalized with the broomstick and um, left hanging? What was the purpose again? I know, well, I would um, not say, I, I would not, before you come in there, Bishop Davis, I would not say, because that is where the distinction must be made. The distinction, somebody who is sexually abused, somebody who has cancer and all these things. Why would I list that as God has a purpose for that? The point about it is... So that's purposeless, to, purposeless. Sir. No, because I am saying to you that because of the Genesis incident, that is why these things are happening on our earth today. That is why people, we have cancers, we have a lot of these sicknesses today. It is all because of the man's heart. Even yeah. people who sexually abuse people. The Bible tells us, tells us that man's heart is wicked because of that sinful act and men the bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god men's heart the, the things they would think about and they would do you know it cries out and it's screaming out for redemption for that uh, man will be yeah, man will bishop, be will come right back at you and ask your question based on what you said sure. bishop davis go ahead bishop davis <laughs> my was mute for whatever reason now uh, but yeah uh thank you um and i, I really applaud you i thank you for taking that seat to demand uh, it's a hot seat <laughs> but um as, as bishop olivier said and, and i want to say it with all with all fairness and, and honesty as i can we cannot discount and and push the genesis the situation out of all that's happening and let me tell you why let me say this i'm going to be as brief as i can god could have and people might say that i'm wrong to say this but god could have made man robotish when he made adam and eve and so this is where you go this is what you do but god made man and he gave them choices and and it was so powerful and sometimes we forget this we cannot forget this if we want to answer the questions that we are dealing with today god said that do not eat from this tree if they eat from it, then that's what's going to happen. God said, name the animals. Whatever you name them, that's what it is. God gave man dominion. And when God gave man dominion, then man had the right and the responsibility to do whatever he desires to do. Make the choices that he wants to make with the dominion that God gave him. And then God could not just step back in and say, I'm taking away your dominion. So you can't do this, you can't do that. But all along the way, all through the Bible, God has been guiding us and instructing us and advising us as to the right path to take. And yet, constantly over and over, we have been making wrong decisions, making taking wrong choices. But God always have a way, always have a way. And I'm getting to the point of, I mean, the young girl was raped and brutalized and whatever else is. And, and what's the good in that? Maybe not to her, but and, and, we could, and, and I could answer and say, I don't know what's going to come out of it. I don't know why god allow what to happen but i know what i would say in my trust in him that he is god and he knows what is best he would allow what is best he would allow it to happen and so we come down god to give us choices we make different choices and but he always find a way of redeeming us always have a way 
let me not say find always have a way of redeeming us of bringing us back uh, to the path if not if not us our children are somewhere along the road but the, the thing is that we 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 don't we don't we don't want to make the right decisions because god of love choices consequences and coming out of those consequences we have certain decisions to make to try to make life better for us or for our children so sometimes we are afraid to make the decisions to do what is necessary if we, if we if we really want to be what god wants us to be he sent um um jonah to nineveh and said nineveh is a bad place go and preach to them and tell them nineveh repented and god the bible says quote and god changed his mind but we are not prepared to do these things we call in um, bishop olivia we call a day of prayer, a prayer and on monday we go and we pray and when we finish praying i don't want to be a prophet of doom or anything when we finish praying we some of us are going to go back to the same thing same old same old same old and then we say why don't god do this but let's let's look at let's, let's look at ourselves and our role and our role here meaning not the four of us or the three of us in this room but those who listen to us let's look at our role in what's happening how we can help in what little we can do what little you can do to help future generation and future people so that the, the young girl who maybe was molested and utilized and whatever else that her death could solve or her situation could solve to help somebody else that you don't need to go that way that route and so we need to look at this that's the world that we live in that we, we live in and we have to get to the point of how can we bring how can we join god's redemption in all of all that we are going through what has happened has happened and, and no matter how good we are we can't change but what lessons are we learning and how are we able to shape our lives and shape the lives of future, future generation based on the lessons that we have learned coming out of the, <coughs> the crudeness of the past i hold your coffee so that means i should stop now. No, no 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 i was i was listening intently i'm listening to both of you um uh listen uh we are into some really hot stuff here yes on Ike tv one foundation we thank you for staying with us and for listening i know we have to take a break but i'm telling you this is such a program if you have to take a break also and as you view the program run off and do something be sure to come right back because we are going to be here we haven't even gotten into the meat of it so thank you for staying with us after your short break and our short break we are back with um Ike tv one foundation discussing this whole matter of suffering which at some point or the other one of you may have already experienced or you may have already experienced some form of suffering or you have seen it up close gentlemen what what we did in the earlier segment you tried to unravel and give us an understanding of the premise oh, mark my words mark my words okay watch it watch it watch it eh? the premise for suffering where did it all start all right um i think from your perspective your biblical worldview um you did an excellent job in saying man when god when when god made the world out of chaos this is what i heard you saying when god made the world out of chaos and he looked at what he made he said it was good it was good it was good he created man and woman he said very good and it was and until man chose to disobey God, that movement from chaos to perfection was, was all right. But when man chose to disobey God, there was a reversal. God was not the agent. That's what I heard you guys saying. God was not the agent that caused the reversal of his creative process. His action was to bring our created universe from chaos into perfection man's action consequent upon that through a reverse which pushed the whole thing in reverse and caused us to revert back to chaos and continued chaos um, in, 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 in the creation itself in storms in the environment and in our relationship with each other so you laid out Bishop Davis and Bishop uh, and Oliver, you laid out quite a premise, a sound, solid, biblical premise for the cause of suffering. Now, here's where I'm going to push you. If you thought I was pushing you, here's where I'm going to really push you. Premise must not be confused with purpose. 
So even if we accept your premise, even if when I say we, I'm speaking for the audience, even if your premise as to the cause of suffering is well explained and is accepted, premise does not define purpose. So even if we say, okay, but I get the premise, what is, I still don't, what is the purpose? Bishop David, Bishop Oliver, I said, I'll come back to you. And I'm coming with a pointed question. What is the purpose? And in particular, I am talking about the young girl who unprovoked, who didn't do anything wrong, who was just minding her own business. And the, most of you know the incident. If you don't know the incident, I'm not going to give you particulars. But most of you know the incident. She didn't bring this on herself. So while we understand, I don't want to hear premise on this side of the ambry. What I want to hear is more in keeping with what we were given for our question today. What is the purpose in the pain? What would you say to that mother is the purpose or the father or the family? For the shootings that we have had in St. Vincent, and I think we are up at 30 something um, homicides this year. 35 homicides this year. What, what would you say to a grieving loved one? Eh, there's a purpose in your son dying. Let me tell you what the purpose is. There's a purpose in your daughter being molested. What would you say to the wives who are faithful to their husband and, and they're just going through a, an emotional wreckage? I would like to hear what you would say to them. Hey, there's a purpose. Right. So I would say to the mother, I would say to those who were killed, the family, that was not purpose. What transpired there was the wickedness in men's heart. And that, that is the point I'm making. When I cross it with some of the things that people have to go through. Okay, just talk, let me pause, pause, yeah. pause, pause. Did you just say that there is no purpose in their pain? I so am saying, I am dealing with what transpired. The, um, somebody's raped, Some um, somebody killed another person. I am, I am saying that what transpired there. No, not the, the action, not the action, not the action. Not the wicked action. I am talking about the felt. I'm talking about the felt pain. Pain. Right. You feel like if your heart is being ripped out. I've right. Known people who have experienced loss, and I'm telling you, I mean, yeah. this is why people throw themselves in graves and all things. They, they are hurting bad. They are in yeah. pain. They and, are in pain. And, what right. is the purpose I've, of the pain? Right. So what I'm saying, I've had fathers. I've I've had one or two come into my office too and right at that point in time if they could have located that individual they would have really they, they probably would have taken them out they would have killed them at that point in time and you see what people are going through and we have to make a distinction and again i will come back and say there are things that will happen on this earth and it is happening because of the wickedness that is in men's heart Right, that's the premise. Like that's the that. premise. Right. Yes, that's the premise. That's the premise and of the action. I'm talking about purpose. If it, purpose, if it purpose. right, so I am not going to link purpose in that. I'm going to I'm going to label it as that's the premise. This is the life. This is the world. What that we are in, because of man's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, these are things that happen on the earth. And so, what we have to do now, we have to get to a point where we have to deal with that situation that has occurred and so forth we cannot blame god for these things because when man disobeyed did it open a floodgate on mankind that happened but when we talk about the purpose now that is the distinction that i have there are people of god that god wanted to teach them and when you look at the scripture it's debatable but when you look at the scripture the people who God wanted to teach a lesson and there was purpose involved are the ones who were Christians, those who were believers and he carried them through a situation I mean in the Old Testament you have the children of Israel um, yes I want to believe all of them in a sense were believers he carried them through situations but the reality is that because of the sinfulness of man there are things that will happen on this earth and God has nothing it's it's because of man's with the man man's heart the wickedness that is in man that is causing the spill off and what is happening to us today 
premise well established purpose you're saying boy some of this purpose is arbitrary there ain't no purpose in in some of the in some of the pain that's what you're saying right there ain't no purpose am, in that pain yeah that because um the thing is it's really i mean in a sense some people will learn a lesson from it because um you know you think back sometimes and i i believe it's unnecessary pressure because sometimes you hear grieving parents would say, boy, maybe I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have done the other. But again, that's a, a that's another reality that people, the men's hearts, sometimes you, you have grown them up in such an environment, you invest a lot into their lives, and still when they get to another age, they just So some decide, pain, some yeah, pain is meaningless and purposeless. Well... <laughs> I mean, how are you defining it? Um, I'm, not I'm sure, trying but... to. I am trying to unravel our topic that assumes. <laughs> Can I come assumes, in? Assumes. Yeah. I come in. That assumes that there is. Uh, what did our topic say? Our topic yeah. said purpose and pain. And what yeah. you just uh, what you just laid out for us is like some of this is too arbitrary. There is no purpose in that pain. And if that's not what you mean or meant, then I will let you come back afterwards and, and clarify. But. At this juncture, we are hearing now uh, some of this pain real arbitrary. Ain't no purpose in that. It's, Bishop Davis. Bishop Davis. Wait, Bishop Davis. Bishop Davis. Bishop Davis. Come on. Bring it. And that's what Bring I'm it. trying to do. I'm trying to make sure that our audience don't think that it's just a dialogue between Bishop Olivier and Dr. And Dr. Richards. <laughs> I care. And that I'm sitting in the room and I'm sitting there because they're seeing me and we're just laughing and smiling. Oh my so, Lord. How so you're done. You're done. You, you <laughs> have Bishop score. Davis is, is, is having great joy. I'm going to abuse myself. <laughs> but gentlemen and our listening audience, um, I will not say that there's no the purpose. What I'll say, I don't know. And I'll be frank, I do not know what the purpose is. I do not know. And I'm frank, I do not know why God would allow um, an innocent child to be raped and to suffer pain. I, I do not know. Okay? But what I also know is that nothing takes God by surprise. Okay? And at the same time, God has given us this freedom. Wait, wait, that wait. Maybe, Nothing takes God by surprise. By, by surprise, so no. God knows beforehand that a 13-year-old girl is going to be totally... Uh, okay, if I, so he knows Bishop, beforehand. Uh, Dr. Dr. Richards, if I believe that God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, then I cannot believe that God doesn't know that something just crept up on God and he wakes up in, wakes up in the morning like we do. And hear right. the news of something bad happening right. on the road, right. and we are surprised right. about right. it. So he that, knows that's, ahead. That, that's not God. So he knows, he knows okay? ahead of time. Then, and so that's why I, I spoke about what. That's why why we spoke about what happened in the Garden of Eden. God has given man freedom, the choice to choose and make make certain decisions with their own life. And he, mm. he, him being God, and uh, yes, I can speak this. Him being God, he just he just allows certain things. He wants us to get to this place. Where we submit our will and we totally, totally to Him. So we mm -hmm. submit ourselves to Him and we live by His, by His, His guidance, by His laws, by His command. What He instructs us to do. I hear uh, that that book that we call the book by the wisest man, Solomon, in the third chapter, verses, I have it in front of me, five and six. Where he says, "Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding." In all of your ways, he said, you must acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So he's telling us, trust him with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, which suggests to me that you know that there's this tendency in man to lean on their own understanding. And whenever you do that, there are going to be consequences. And again, I don't know why. It's painful. And we're talking about pain today. And I'm talking to a general audience. It's painful to know that a little child or an innocent person or anybody for that matter would, would meet these, what, what I would call untimely death, or this cruel death and this pain that leaves families devastated and, and in pain and sometimes wanting to just throw themselves in the, in the grave. It's, it's painful, it's heart-wrenching, it's difficult. And, and, and none of us, especially as Christians, could just sit back and say, well, they have it coming and that's okay with them. 
but as to as to what the, what the purpose is what the purpose is we just have to we just have to trust the the providence of god and hope that maybe there's something in it that we don't know that we don't see there are times i'm pretty certain our, our, our illustrious preachers here and ministers and speakers dr richards and and, and um uh, Bishop Olivier, sometimes at the end of a message, we'll just maybe show ourselves in some place and say, God, why? 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 Why this? Why is this? We question God. We question God as human beings. We say, God, why? Why is this so? Why? Why did you allow this to happen? But we have to trust His providence. We have to trust His grace and trust that He is God and something is going to come out. I don't know what's going to come out of this for that little girl or those people who died, but we just have to trust God and we have to instruct people. To me, that's the purpose of this, this this program. We have to advise people that please find it within yourself to trust God, to walk in the ways of God. Again, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six: Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. We have our understanding that wants us to go certain ways and do certain things, but every every time we do that, it's they're going to lead to chaos and confusion and difficulties and pain. And I'll say one more thing: that you mentioned that little girl, but well, think of that baby who's born to a, a, a mother or father who decided in their early life to go down the road of drugs and now they become they become the rain on the streets and they have their child and the child suffering the consequence of what the mother or the father did and have to live their life in a certain way in a substandard way because of choices they are innocent but they are suffering the consequences the question is why what's the purpose in that i don't know but i trust god that somewhere somehow um, I'll sign put it up just now. Yes, it's William Cooper says his purposes will ripen fast, fulfilling every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the That's an old song. <laughs> yeah, man. And blind yeah, unbelief yeah, is sure yeah. to hear. And we will scan his work in vain, but God is his own interpreter. So I can't speak to him. And, and he will make it plain. He will Don't make it plain. Right, in, right, the, right. in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, he will make it plain. But until yeah. then, we just have to trust. And we just have to advise those listening to us today to think about the, the choices you make today because it might cause other people you love to suffer okay. the consequences that have nothing to do with them. Okay, thank you, Bishop. Um, you, you felt like you got a chance to say something there? <laughs> I, I felt like a preacher, man. <laughs> Listen, I'm only trying to guide this program. I'm only, I'm only trying to guide it. You know, um, and you're doing a wonderful helpful. job. I'm trying, thank you. I'm, I'm, trying to help, um, I'm, I'm trying to think this is not a discussion between us three, but I'm actually thinking more so of our audience. And I'm trying to guide and ask the questions that I feel like they want asked. And, um, Amen. and again, the, the whole concept of this whole discussion, um, episode 15, was this whole premise that there is purpose in pain. Purpose in pain. And um, two of you panelists seem to take a slightly different angle unless Bishop Oliver decides to revise his point. I'm hearing, man, some of these things are like, I can't see where the purpose is. There's no purpose there. And um, Bishop Davis, you were saying, man, there, there, is a, there is a purpose. There is a purpose, but I don't know what the purpose is, but there's got to be a purpose. Um, I, I, any any other comments from from you two gentlemen? Because as I sit here, I tell you what I'm thinking. Of. As I listen to you at length, um, uh, Bishop Oliver, and I listen to you, Bishop Davis, I I know that there's a broad swath of people out there that are thinking. We are, we are all um, our four parents. We got over here. Uh, we are not you know of a type of uh, Caribbean descent. So we 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 were brought in. We were imported. I'm talking about the Atlantic Passage and the atrocities of a people ripped out of their homeland and basically treated as commodities. Um, you could insure for the life of people and, and then one, once they become a liability, you dump, you dump a human being out into the Atlantic. I mean, and I remember once I was lecturing on this, I just broke down crying. I couldn't even, I broke, when I started thinking of the pain and suffering of human being being treated as objects and dumped and receiving insurance money on them millions dumped millions dumped to receive insurance money because the insurance money was better than the liability of bringing them across the atlantic and the kind of suffering and bishop davis saying well you know god knew ahead of time this was going to happen no this is accounts for some of the more the 
the, the most um, heart-wrenching suffering in the recorded history of man. And God knows. And um, so if our topic is right, then the sufferings of all of these people uh, must have been a purpose to it. And there are a lot of people out there having a real hard time reconciling the idea that there was a purpose in this suffering. We are have to, we gonna have to move into our wrap up phase here in in just a little bit. So I don't know if um, I have to go back to Bishop Oliver though, because you might want a chance to clarify what you said earlier. Yeah, um, I honestly to change your position is a little problem there because my thing is. We have to take Jeremiah 17 at verse 9 into account. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. And we have to understand that the a number of things that are happening in our world today, it's because of the heart, how man thinks. And because men do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, there will be that thinking. You know, they don't like, think of the, the trade. And I, I I am so grateful that you, you raised that. I mean, I have gone to a point now, I don't like to watch any movies with slave with the slave trade. I, I would literally it's turn hard. it off. It's, it's, it's yeah, hard it's watch. difficult. It's very, very I was not a slave. My parents were not one. But, you know, it, it it's really it's something difficult to absorb. What were happening? What happened to these men? Who were taking people and moving them and treating them like objects again it comes back to the heart the heart of man you know all the thinking about his money and so forth and so we have to look at that our time of prayer when we come together and pray for the nation we are praying that god will speak to the hearts of men that men will come to a place and when i say uh, when i say men I'm, I'm also referring to women young people and so forth that we would come to a place where we understand we need to change we need jesus christ in our lives to experience that change when he has come into our lives and the, the transformation process is activated in our lives the way that we used to think we would not find ourselves thinking like that anymore. And that is just my line with it, um, with regards to that. The surviving people now, those who have to go through whatever they're at that point in time. Because if we just sit, and sit down and say, okay, God has a purpose for, purpose for this, that is why some people will continue blaming God. But we cannot take that place. We cannot take this part out. That Jeremiah 79, we cannot man's heart that heart there and whatever you think inside there is just a matter of time that you put it into practice and you make okay. it happen okay now gentlemen okay start start thinking start framing your wrap-up thoughts that's where <laughs> we are going but let me go ahead and put this in because i haven't really i've been mostly asking questions i haven't really often much of a perspective but um let me summarize what i've heard god is not the active agent in chaos in suffering and pain god didn't cause it and he is not causing it so that's what i heard okay um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm hearing you well that god did not cause it here's the question why does he not stop it and i don't know that either of you gentlemen or myself i don't know that we have adequately explained why god doesn't stop it now let me give you and, and maybe we can unpack all of that but let me let me look to job let me look to job you know god no, you know job suffered miserably all of his possessions his animals his children um and even his own body totally i mean it was real tough for job he just fell it was it was messed up it was really really messed up and again god didn't cause this god didn't cause it god just said let, okay um you know let it let it unfold um what um Hasatan came to job um to god and said what a man uh, serve you for nothing uh, so god just allowed circumstances to unfold and job died oh guys um i mean some of you might dissect that scripture and say well yeah god having the power basically gave in and let you know that that happened and god was the activation 
my reading of it is not necessarily that God, um, God's will was for this to happen to Job. That was never God's will. And Job asked and asked and asked, but God allowed and allowed and allowed and allowed this total deterioration until Job's wife said, man, just curse God and die. And God did not stop it. So what we do know, and if from nothing else, from the example of Job, but we have multiple examples, God does not stop suffering. He does not cause it, but he does not stop it. He allows it to work itself out. Could there be, therefore, some redemptive purpose that God didn't cause the suffering? He's not stopping it because the suffering is probably working a greater good. Can we speak to that as we wrap up? Well, look at the time. Always, <laughs> I if we can speak it's, always, it. it's always disadvantageous for the person who wraps up first. Because, I mean, all the others have. But I'll, 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 I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, uh, yes, sir, yes. Sir. First that of all, break um, you, that break you had there, you sharp. <laughs> no, man, no, man. Because, I mean, <laughs> and you, you guys don't know. No, no, I promise, I promised uh, Bishop Dr. Richards to share some things with you. And I cannot finish rubbing my mind around it yet. I mean, people may not know, but all that has been happening in our country all of, all the time, but culminating last week and leading up, they, they're causing so much in a spiritual pain 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 in you and you know sometimes you you, you find it difficult to put it to words to, to be able to, to but i, I can it. sense it i can sense that you it's really weighing on you i can say yes so and it's not it's just what it is but let me speak to what you said in, in a minute or two i quoted at the beginning from james james chapter 1 verse 13 to 15 he said let no man say when he's tempted because god allowed that he's tempted i am tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempt he any man but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed and verse 15 says then when lust has conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death so why does why why didn't god stop adam and eve go back there from 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 sinning from eating of that tree in the garden why didn't God stop the serpent from going up and, and tempting Eve? Why didn't God stop a number of things? And why didn't God, you know, stop and bring it to the point where his only begotten son have to come to this world to die for man's sin? Okay. But so then the, the question, my, my or listen audience, what do we do? What do we do? What lessons have we learned from what's happening? What lessons have we learned from the, whether the slave trade or the murders, the killing? And what lessons are we learning? And we speak specifically maybe to St. Vincent. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, what lessons are we learning? Hmm? What do we do to fix it or to help prevent it from happening in the future? Because I believe that we have it within us. I'm not talking about the four of us in this room or the three of us in this room. I'm talking about Vincentian. We have it within us as a nation. To help to fix and stop some of these things that's happening but we have to come together as a nation and understand that i mean this country is important to all of us it's important to all, this country and let me go out on the limb now dr olivier yeah. which bishop and dr richard bishop olivier whoever this country doesn't belong to ulp or ndp this country belongs to us and our children and our children's children okay and so we cannot allow politics or anything to cause us to go down a certain road that that ruin the country for our children my grandchildren your grandchildren children to come we have to do whatever is in our power to to help to fix the fix what's going on so what do we do but we, we cannot do it without god yeah. we cannot do whatever solution we come up with it must not be minus god god has to be integral in it God have to be sent off it. We have to allow God to do for us and do to us what only He can do. And unless we do that, unless we come to a place where we understand that yes, really and truly, Jesus is the answer. Unless we come to not just to say that, but to live it and practice it and show it that Jesus is the answer to the problems we are having today. Not 12 conserves, not God on Friday, not Dr. Um, Bishop. Olivier, not Dr. Richards, not Bishop Davis, not any one of us. Jesus is the answer. But when we project Jesus, when we preach Jesus, do you listen to us? Do you spend time to hear what we're saying and try to internalize it? This discussion we're having today, will you internalize it and say to yourself, what, what, what can I do? What can I do? Because it starts with an individual, each one of us, one by one. Well done, so yes, well there's done, pain and well suffering, done. but... 
Well Let's done. just go on, man. Well, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Bishop so, Davis. That came from your heart. Thank yes. you. Bishop, Bishop so, Olivier, your turn. Driver. So all I want to do, just put a little icing on that, sir. Uh, on Monday the 31st, we are going to have a prayer for our nation and all denominations. Well, not all. Most of the um, denominations, we're going to come together on the platform from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are praying for this nation. 12 hours of lives. prayer. 12 yes. hours of prayer. We are and in the context of this meeting, it's tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So this is here to the Sunday, so tomorrow. Yes, today is wonderful. Sunday, tomorrow, Monday. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and we know. want to pray. So we are going, we are on Zoom, and we will certainly have it on the um, Facebook pages and so forth, um, all our churches. So we want you to join in. And also, we are going to be on Facebook. So we want to just pray. Pray for this nation, St. Vincent and the Grandies. And one of the things I would like to say, we don't want to stop on the 31st of July. We want to continue praying for St. Vincent and the Grenadines that hearts and lives are going to be touched. This nation, we have to experience a change because think of it, our parents, our daughters, our sons, they are dependent on what is happening in, um, in this nation. If people decide not to come back here, we're going to have a problem in our hands. So I don't want to tamper with Bishop Davis, what you have said, but I just wanted to put that bit in. So to God be the glory. We have come to the end of yet another scintillating, I think, um, discussion that went deep into a number of things. Premise, cause, consequence, but we also look at purpose. Uh, we want to thank all of you who tuned in and uh, Many of you are repeat um, visitors to this particular program. We want to thank you for your interest. And others, if this is your first time, we want to encourage you to share the link, share this slot, tell other people about it, and continue to listen. We may not have given you all of the answers. And you know the reason for that is we don't have all of the answers. We might not have been able to explain the purpose of your suffering, but we explain what we know. God is not the cause. Bishop Davis said it so eloquently, God is the solution. God is who you need. In the midst of all of this suffering that he didn't cause, he is the one you need to hold on to. Don't turn your back on God in your moment of pain and need, whether you are angry as some of you must be, or you are broken as some of you must be. God is the one you turn to. Thank you so much for all of your comments, gentlemen, and thank you to the audience. God bless you all. Have a safe and wonderful weekend.